Here at the IC Summit in Florida, we say shalom to Eric Fingerhut, President and CEO of JFNA, Jewish Federations of North America. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, Yoni. So first of all, a few words about the importance of this summit. First of all, it's one of the big, it's the biggest summit since the pandemic, and that's, uh, of course, very exciting. But about the, the essence. Yes, it's very, it's very important for the North American Jewish community. Of course, the, every organized Jewish community has a Jewish federation. We represent 146 Jewish federations, which is really every large and small Jewish community. Uh, every community now has uh, a growing population of Israeli Americans. Uh, and uh, first of all, our, we want to be make sure that our Jewish communities represent and include and serve all, uh, all in our community. So Let's making talk sure about that, that for a yeah. second, because we are hearing that that is one of the challenges um, when these Israelis come uh, to their areas in uh, in America, throughout America. So sometimes, on the one hand, they don't want to be part of anything because they just left Israel. Sometimes they're seen uh, by the Jewish community as people who left Israel, which is a bit opposed to their ideals. There's a big challenge here. We're hearing it a lot. Yeah, I I, I think it's less uh, about that Israelis don't want to become involved uh, because of they left it or we look down on it. And so I actually think there, there may have been some of that in the history, but I don't think that's okay. today. I think it's more that, um, that on both sides there's some misunderstandings. I don't think Israelis understand why uh, what it takes to to organize and support Jewish communities and Jewish communal life because you don't have to do it in Israel. You, in Israel, you live in a Jewish state. Here, you know, we're a voluntary association. We have to build the kinds of infrastructures, and everyone is called upon to contribute in some way or another to building and sustaining and supporting Jewish life. It's a bit of a foreign concept to an Israeli coming here, um, and, and conversely, Americans, you know, we tend not to think everybody's like us, and we don't realize that we're t that we have to maybe explain ourselves differently and reach out in different ways. But, but I, I think there's something very important. So one is we, we need to bridge that gap, and, and it's important. I, I think, it, I think there's, there's two new things that are happening that, that are important to note. One is, of course, it's not just people who you know, were born in Israel and moved here. It's now also children and grandchildren. So my, you know, I have senior staff at the Jewish Federation of North America who are Israeli Americans. Their parents are American, but they were born here. Their kids were born here. Um, but they have a, uh, a unique perspective on Israel because of their families that we need. We need that help. We so that's need the that, you know. What you get from them. What is it important for your uh, federations, your communities to understand uh, the extra value of uh, these people, of these people, what they Absolutely. come with? Absolutely. First of all, the good news is that that they tend the children and grandchildren tend to understand American Judaism better. Uh, so some of that disconnect that may have occurred with their parents doesn't occur to them because they grew up here. Um, so that's that's starting to go away. And the growing numbers, the extent that and this is I see is important, the extent that they maintain their commitment to Israel and Zionism, Growing up among North American Jews would be very, very helpful because you know, for North American Jews, look, if you're 18 years old, you grew up in America, you've never been sub, you've never been a victim of anti-Semitism. Being Jewish has just been a nice part of your life. And the result you grew up, is what in, we you, see grew, you grew up in America with you know, no the separation of church and state, and all of these kinds of things. You don't, you don't intuitively get why a Jewish state is essential, you know, to the thriving of the Jewish people around the world. But if your friend, whose parent is Israeli or grandparent is Israeli, is helping you understand that, it adds to whatever you get on your birthright trip and whatever you get on the other experiences. So let's go back to JFNA, the federations, the communities. What's going on these days in terms of your activity? Well, I think it's it's very important for Israel Israelis to know that the, the, the Jewish communities in North America, first of all, played an unbelievable role in, in uh, throughout COVID, throughout this pandemic, in keeping our communities alive, sustained, caring for people uh, you know who are in need, out of work, mental you know stress, and uh, and all the challenges that came uh, with uh, with COVID, uh, and uh, and unfortunately, uh, in addition to having to deal with the crisis of COVID. Uh, we've also been dealing, as you know now, with a rise, not just of anti-Semitism, but of violent attacks on the Jewish community. This past October uh, 27th was uh, just the third anniversary of the Tree of Life uh, shooting, which, if you trace back to that date, 
uh, you're looking at three years of really that includes the most violent attacks on on Jews in America in the history of of the country. San Diego, Boston, Muncie, New Jersey, you know, Jersey City, Brooklyn, on and on. Security. So the challenge of security is real. We have been in the business of building up Jewish communal security infrastructure for you know, a decade or more, but there's but obviously a huge urgency. Right now there's 45 of the 146 Jewish federations have community professional community security initiatives that then work with every synagogue and every JCC and every, and we are in the midst of a campaign that we call Live Secure to both lift up the quality of those, uh, you know, of those programs and complete and expand the umbrella across all 146 uh, federations. And then of course, you know, we have a national organization called the Secured Community Network that, that helps train and professionalize uh, uh, this system. We've also been uh, lobbying successfully for support from the government, particularly the federal government, but also many states, for funds to help uh, secure buildings by the cameras, the doors, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the barriers, et cetera, uh, that are very expensive uh, and that are needed. So this has been a major effort of ours and we take responsibility for and, and we will make sure that we secure our community. Eric Fingerhut, President and CEO of JFNA, thank you very much. Thank you, Yoni.